This is a practice exercise from page 231 in the textbook. We're looking at writing electron configurations and then determining the number of unpaired electrons. So the first thing we want to do when we write an electron configuration is we want to figure out what element we're writing that electron configuration for and locate that element in the periodic table. So phosphorus is in group 5 and it's in period 3, so I can put a little star here. That's phosphorus. So when we go through our electron configuration, we are going to start at the top and we're just going to go through the total electrons until we reach our element. Now we start here at the lowest energy level and that is the 1s orbital. So we write 1s to indicate the orbital and s orbitals hold a maximum of two electrons and we can see that because there are two elements that have electrons in their 1s orbital. So we write this as 1s2 to indicate the two electrons after we're done with the 1s, we move down to the 2s. Notice that we're in energy level 2, but this is still the s block, so this is 2s. And again, we have two electrons because each s orbital holds a maximum of two electrons. Keep going. We get here to the p block, and we know that there are three different p orbitals, three degenerate p orbitals, three p orbitals with the same energy. Since each orbital holds two electrons, and I've got three orbitals, that's a total of six electrons. And that also makes sense because we've got six columns in the p block. So my 2p orbital is going to hold a total of six electrons. So now I'm down here in my 3s orbital. Notice that I'm back in the s block, but now it's the third energy level. And that again holds a maximum of two electrons. And then I'm over here in my 3p orbitals, but I don't need to use all of them. I don't need to put six electrons in there. I only need to put one, two, three electrons in because phosphorus is in the third column of the p block. So I write that as 3p3. So this is the electron configuration for phosphorus, and there is a way for us to check our work. And the way we can check our work is because we know that the superscripts tell us the number of electrons. So I can see that I've got two electrons, two, six, two, and three. So if I add those numbers together, two plus two plus six plus two plus three, I get a total of 15. And that makes sense because phosphorus has an atomic number of 15, so the neutral atom would have 15 protons and 15 electrons. So I have written the correct electron configuration to show you the locations for each of those 15 electrons. Next thing we're doing is we're trying to figure out how many unpaired electrons phosphorus has. In order to talk about unpaired electrons, we really want to look at valence electrons. Valence electrons are your outer shell, your outermost electrons, and they are the electrons that are in the highest energy level. Remember that the electron energy levels get bigger as the energy numbers increase, so that third energy level is bigger and it's further away from the nucleus. So this third energy level here, these are our valence electrons. And again, those are valence electrons because they are the outermost electrons, and those are the ones in the largest energy level, so the third energy level. Everything else in the first two energy levels here, those are what we call core electrons because they are further inside. Those core electrons will almost always be paired, so when we talk about unpaired electrons, we really are thinking about valence electrons. Notice again that those core electrons have the lower energy levels, that's why they're core and valence on the outside. So when we think about unpaired electrons, it helps to draw these orbital diagrams. So I'm going to do one box to represent the 3s orbital, and I'm going to do three boxes to represent the 3p orbitals. Now the reason I'm only doing one box for the 3s is because there is only one 3s orbital which holds two electrons. The reason I'm doing three boxes for the 3p is that there are three different p orbitals. They're all the same energy, which is why these boxes are right next to each other and they're on the same line. This is the px, the py, and the pz. Now, the order doesn't really matter, but I've got three p orbitals here. So what I'm going to do with this diagram is I'm going to try to show you how the electrons are inside these orbitals. Remember that our electrons are considered to be spin up or spin down, plus one half or minus one half. So when we draw the electrons, we draw little half arrows that are either pointing up or pointing down to indicate the spins. So let's start by filling in the 3s orbital. I know that there are two electrons inside that 3s orbital, 
And I know that electrons, when they're in the same orbital, have to have one spin up and one spin down. So their spins have to be in opposite directions. So that takes care of my 3s electrons. And now I see that I have three electrons in my 3p orbitals. Now, according to Hund's rule, if I have degenerate orbitals that have the same energy level, when I put the electrons in, I'm going to put them in the same spin, so spin up is typically what we do first, and I want to spread them out. Since these orbitals all have the same energy, those spin up electrons are going to move as far apart from each other as they possibly can. So those three electrons in the 3p orbital go spin up, spin up, spin up. If I needed to put a fourth electron in, that's when I would start doubling up and I would have one spin down electron here. So the fourth electron would go here and the next ones would be spin down. But if I only have three electrons to put into my three p orbitals, they each get their own p orbital. So to answer this question, there are three unpaired electrons in phosphorus. So again, when you write electron configurations, you want to start by identifying the element, figuring out its location in the periodic table, and then you're going to write your electron configuration starting with your 1s orbital and just reading through the periodic table until you get to your element. When you're doing unpaired electrons, you want to think about where your valence electrons are, and then draw that orbital diagram to figure out which ones are paired, which ones are unpaired. Again, these 3s are considered paired because I have one spin up, one spin down. These 3p are unpaired. And the reason I filled the 3s before moving on to the 3p is because the 3s is a lower energy, so I need to fill the lower energy orbitals before I can move to the higher energy orbitals.